This episode of the Sleuthcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company in your own backyard of Harrisburg, Ohio. They are fair trade certified USDA organic, and integrity is their core value to do the right thing even when no one is looking. They have high quality coffee beans from all across including Colombia, Brazil, Honduras, Peru, and far other far-off lands. Coffee's coming K-Cup, gift cards still available, and of course, free shipping over $50. Be sure to hit up their uh, website, ironbeancoffee.com, to check out all the great uh, flavors that Jared will go over in the middle of the episode here. Again, that is Iron Bean Coffee Company, where Iron Bean Coffee Company is America's local coffee roaster. What is up, YouTube? What is up, Discord? Um, just want to let everyone know real quick, this is our last Buckeye Scoop episode. This is our last Buckeye Scoop episode. If you want to continue watching us on YouTube, uh, please be sure to follow us on our own Buckeye channel, or the own uh, Sloopcast channel. Uh, just search Sloopcast under channels and you'll find us. Uh, or you can go to uh, youtube.thesloopcast.com and you can also find us doing that. So just want to let you know, if you still want to watch us after we leave the scoop, we're just over on the other, on our own YouTube channel, which we've been posting to all along anyway. It's just that, that everyone watches us here, which is, which was fine, but we just want to make sure you can still find us if you want to keep finding us. So Kyle, with that, uh, I say, let's get the show started. All right. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm all right, Jared. How are you doing today? I am not going to complain, good sir. I am not going to complain. Uh, Kyle, this is our final episode of 2021. This is our final episode, a part of the uh, Buckeye Scoop Network. Uh, this is the final game in which... Well, I don't know. Like, I was going to say, we, we've already seen the final games of, of a bunch of Ohio State players, um, which is, you know, I guess this is just how stuff works now. Um, like, we and we can all bemoan the the loss of the, the the importance of the Rose Bowl and all that. Like, it's, it's, it's become, Kyle, it has become college football's greatest tradition every year in the last week or two of the year. Kirk Herb Street emerges like the great pumpkin from the pumpkin patch to remind everyone that the Rose Bowl still matters. God damn it. No, not, in, not, not in today's age. It does not. It, it does not just growing up. Yeah. It, it had a little bit more meaning to it, but ever since pretty much the, the start of the millennium, it's, it's not the same. Uh, the BCS uh, dealt a, a terrible blow to the Rose Bowl and all the other premium bowl games. Um, and, and then the playoff has, has straight up murdered it. Uh, just finished it off. It's been that honest, but I wanted the playoff. Like how can you not have number one, not play number two? And how do you not have the teams prove it on the field as opposed to putting all of this power into the polls? Like, I understand that we, a lot of people still have great reverence and whatnot for the Rose Bowl. And that's fine. But that time has, has come and that time has gone. And we have a playoff now, which is what everyone wanted. And if that comes at the sacrifice of a Rose Bowl, whose entire exist is an entire thing to exist to, to sell tickets and to draw attraction to a parade, then so be it. Well, let's not forget that the whole idea behind the Rose Bowl from the beginning was to just draw attention to the dang parade. Let's that it was a marketing scheme. That that's what it is. Let, let, let's quit romanticizing this stuff. It's the Rose Bowl. It's fine. Whatever. It's it is a consolation prize, Kirk Herb Street. I'm sorry. It is. 
uh, you know, like I said, like Herb, Herb, Kirk Herb Street comes out of the pumpkin patch to remind everyone that the Rose Bowl is not a consolation prize. Oh, okay. Ohio State would rather play in the Rose Bowl than the playoff then, Mr. Herb Street. Is that what you're telling me, Mr. Herb Street? That Ohio State would much rather play in the Rose Bowl? They lost to Michigan on purpose so they could play in the Rose Bowl instead of go to the playoff. This is what Kirk Curb Street is telling us by telling us that the Rose Bowl is not a consolation prize. It is. Sorry. Times change. Uh, and sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse, but times change and the Rose Bowl is a consolation prize. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, news wise, Jared kind of um, hint at it at the beginning here. Uh, got a number of uh, Buckeye players out officially as we're recording. There are rumors of others. Um, I will say for the fact the ones that are out right now confirmed is Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Haskell Garrett, and Nicholas Petit Freire. Yeah, al although we keep seeing pictures of Chris Olave dressed and practicing with the team yep. in Pasadena. Yeah, taking taking punt return kicks and running routes. Very maybe he's very just confusing. maybe he's just taking on a very active coaching role. It's a very maybe. active coaching role. Um, mm -hmm. I I don't know. It's he says he's it, like it, where he's he's not supposed to be playing. He's not supposed to be playing yeah. yet. He's practicing. Meanwhile, you know there there are reports uh, reports that I don't a hundred percent know are true and therefore won't repeat uh in detail but uh, essentially that there are other ohio state players who aren't even in california right now uh for you know one reason or another so uh who, who have not officially been labeled as not playing so who knows we'll see uh but yeah expect a number of ohio state players at the very least as kyle said uh, Garrett Wilson, Haskell Garrett, and NPF, uh, who have all apparently played their last Ohio State games. Yeah, so that's going to be that's going to be the next big question. Then, Jared, is who's who's going to fill in for these? So, of of these players here, Wilson, Olave, Garrett, and NPF, which one is really the the biggest blow? I mean, you could say Wilson or Olave because of <laughs> just first round uh draft picks you you could say sure. maybe them but you could also look at the wide receiver depth chart and maybe it's not going to be as big of a blow sure maybe it's the maybe it's the offensive lineman maybe it's garrett on the defensive line side which ones do you think which one do you think is the biggest blow well, with NPF like Ohio State has too many dang tackles which is why they were playing tackles at Ohio State uh, at guard at Ohio State this year anyway, right? So I feel like, you know, you, you, you take one of your tackles. Um, I don't know if the, I don't know if they're going to kick Munford out. I don't know um, if they're going to. I assume they're going to. That uh, that would be my assumption that they're going to kick Munford out. Mun Munford's going to play one more game at tackle. Um, but I also wouldn't be shocked if they sort it. And, you know. Again, because the Rose Bowl isn't doesn't really matter. Sorry, Rose Bowl doesn't matter. M maybe they get a jump on 2021 or excuse me, 2022, whatever the hell year it is and will be. Um, and maybe they move Paris Johnson out there. I feel like that's where we're going to see Paris Johnson next year. Maybe move Paris Johnson out there. Let let him get a head start on 2021 and play him at tackle. Mm hmm. Um, I, I, the pro a lot of that probably depends upon how soon, like how, how early did Ohio state know that they weren't going to have NPF because you probably aren't going to move Paris Johnson out to left tackle from right guard, unless you had a lot of practice time to make sure he was prepared. So maybe, maybe that's not a good idea if they didn't have the time to implement that correctly in a timely manner. So in that case, maybe Munford, maybe it's always Munford. Maybe it was always going to be Munford that they, that they moved out to the left tackle, no matter what. Yeah. Um, yeah, Haskell I, yeah, Garrett, I, I, but Haskell Garrett seems to be, I, cause Ohio state, I think that's where they're, uh, you know, wide receiver 
this is maybe the best wide receiver combo in Ohio State history. To lose both of them sucks. Man, Ohio State is loaded at wide receiver. And again, get a jump start in 2021 because you're not going to, no matter what, you're not, you don't have these guys for 2021. So again, let's get it. The Rose Bowl doesn't matter. Sorry. I'm going to keep saying it. Rose Bowl doesn't matter. Let's get a jump start on these, on these new wide receivers that we're going to have in place next year. Yeah. I mean, Emeka Fleming, um, Marvin, Marvin Harrison Jr. They're, they're not Olave, they're not Olave or Wilson, but man, it, it's still a great, great group of um, wide receiver uh, players that could just fill in and make some plays. I, I'm what, one of the things I'm curious to see is will JSN stay in the slot? You know, with theoretically the 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 Olave situation is weird, uh, but it, like it. So let's just say Olave's out because he's supposed to be right. Let's just say Alave's out. Like, do do you move JSN? Does, is JSN going to play slot next year, or is he going to bump out and play Garrett Wilson's? I, I assume it would be Garrett Wilson's spot on the outside. Get a head start in twenty twenty one. Let's let's start playing JSN in the new spot. Or are you like ah, you know, maybe let's we still. You know, I, I get I, I get that our quarterback isn't like a freshman freshman anymore, right? Like he's he has a full a full year in his pocket at this point, right? But yep. let, maybe let's not take away all of his safety blankets. Let's let's make sure he says one of his <laughs> wide receivers exactly where he expects them to be. Uh, you know, maybe maybe throw CJ Stroud a bit of a bone and and make sure that make sure that like his slot guy is still number 11 so that he has something familiar happening. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. I, I agree with it. you, Brawley. Brawley says JSN, Marvin Harrison and Abuka is, I, I think, I assume you're predicting the starters when you say that. Um, I, I, for, for the record, I, well, I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, I'll, I'll read it. Brawl says, I'm convinced Fleming is transferring eventually, even though you guys can't say it. Yeah. Like, and we don't talk about transfers, um, unless someone's actually already in the transfer portal and like quarterbacks, it's just, that's just how quarterbacks are nowadays. So like, we will talk about quarterback transfers, but it, cause it's just, it's just stupid not to, uh, I have no indication at this time. I've been surprised by transfers before, so I'm not saying it's not happening. Okay. I'm not saying absolutely not. Fleming's not transferring. That, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting on that soapbox because I don't know. But the point is, is that I don't know. And, and I have no reason to believe at this time that that's what's happening. Could I be wrong? Sure. I've seen guys transfer and just been like, what the hell are you doing? That's a terrible call. And I think that would be Fleming right now. I think it would be a terrible call for Fleming to transfer. Um, end of spring maybe if he gets to the end of spring and he doesn't like where he is on the depth chart maybe but to do that now this offseason feels like uh would feel like a a huge uh mistake at, i i think yeah um i'm trying to remember who it is oh yeah here it is uh in that transfer portal too um since we don't mentioned about not wanting mention unless it happen actually happens. We did have a transfer that actually happened, Jared. Uh, um, an incoming transfer, yes. Yeah. Um running back uh Damont uh Tranum. Yeah. I know um, I'm pronouncing that wrong. Train I think it's more like Trainum. Um, Trainum. Okay. Um he's but I also from, could be wrong. He, he's he's coming from Arizona State, but not for running back, but could be play, playing linebacker for a Yeah State. he yeah, he played linebacker at Arizona State, um, but was recruited as a running back. <laughs> Stop me if this sounds familiar, Steel Chambers. Um, and, you know, as far as any... What, why, why did I totally get lost there for a second? Yeah, com coming from Arizona State to Ohio State and is a Ohio kid. Uh, he is uh, formerly from the 
um, Akron area. I'm trying to remember which high school it was. Is why I'm hesitating right now. I think was it. I don't think it was Hoban. I forget. Um, it was Hoban. Brawl says it was Hoban. Okay, so it was Hoban. I was thinking it wasn't, but anyway, the I'll trust Brawls because he said it very confidently, and that's all I need to be convinced. So yeah, uh, much like Steel Chambers, uh, went into college running back. Uh, seems to be leaving it a linebacker, and you know an Akron Hoban kid. So that's. That's tremendous, and that's not the first transfer Ohio State picked up in the portal. Um, it seems that Ohio that the uh, new Ohio State defensive coordinator is uh, bringing someone with him from Oklahoma State. So Ohio State also going to be getting some much-needed safety help. Uh, that's obviously huge news. We're not going to go into a huge amount of detail on it because we've been gone for a minute, and I'm sure everyone's – I'm sure the topic's been talked to death already. Yep. Uh, but yeah, uh, another huge pickup for Ohio state. Um, I, you know, it's, I, it's, you, 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 you're trying to find some pieces and the defense needs some pieces. Um, so that's, that's obviously an enormous pickup for Ohio state as well. Kyle, um, we're fifth, 16 minutes into a, uh, know your enemy episode and we've, we've yet to, uh, do the thing where we get to know our enemy. Um, and you know, the reasons are obvious because, um, I'm not sure if you noticed Kyle, uh, or if you figured this out for yourself yet, Kyle, this, this game doesn't actually matter. So, sorry, Kirk. Kirk street hates when I say that. Um, no, exactly. Yeah. Brawley said, Brawley said it right. This is a two, two, 2022 preview exactly what it is this is this is the pre-spring game <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right jared before we get to know our enemy Hell, the other say, team even kind of wears something close to scarlet and gray yeah before we get to know our enemy jared let's let's go ahead and hear from our sponsor the iron bean coffee company sure thing uh, Iron Bean Coffee. Uh, you can go to ironbeancoffee.com and find a bunch of amazing coffees. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through here real quick, see what uh, I might be able to find. Let's see. Seeing if we have anything interesting going on. Guys, uh, want to throw this out there. The white chocolate peppermint coffee is still available. It is seasonal. So if that's a thing you've been wanting to try, you might want to jump on that because last time it ran out, this time of year last year, we didn't see it again for months. So if that if that sounds like something you want, I would highly recommend jumping on top of that. All of their flavored coffees are currently in stock. It seems like there always seem to be missing one or two here and there. Maybe it's the peanut butter chocolate one that's out. Uh, the cinnamon roll one's been out a couple times. The salted caramel mocha runs out of stock sometimes. So if, if any of that, or maybe the butter pecan or the bananas foster, uh, runs out of stock. You might want to jump on that as quickly as possible. Um, the the mom's carrot cake, as an example, is currently out of stock. Uh, so, but that that that's a year round coffee. You can still jump on that one when it comes back. Uh, but if flavored coffees, maybe flavored coffees aren't your thing. Uh, the folks over at Iron Bean Coffee have an amazing lineup of uh, standard coffees, a lot of which are currently Kyle on sale. Currently on sale right now is the Odin, which is a dark roast coffee, uh, the Loki, which is their light roast coffee, uh, the Fear No Evil, which is their black roast coffee. It's it's a coffee darker than dark. Uh, the Thor, which is a medium dark-ish coffee, currently on sale. The Integrity, which is their flagship coffee, which makes a great espresso, if that's a thing you're into, currently on sale. The Cast Iron and the Drink from the Skull of Your Enemy, two of my personal favorites. Um, you throw that in there with the ride or die. Those are my three favorite coffees of theirs. I'm pretty sure. So um, the ride or die, not currently on sale, but the other two, the drink from the skull of your enemy and the cast iron are currently on sale. So you can uh, go save a couple bucks. If you want to go save a couple bucks over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Jared, it is time to know our enemy, the Utah Utes. The Utes, or the or. original you. They are the original you. Uh, this is this is Kyle's rant. I don't know, Kyle. Would you like to go on your on your 
on your the you rant? No, not really. We've done it. <laughs> We've done it in years <laughs> past. They they are the they are the original you, Miami of Florida. Stealing stealing um Utah's you thing. So it's it's Utah's thing. They they got they got good colors, so I have I'm gonna stick with Utah here. <laughs> and can we I mean like Miami universe like they're like, we're the U. But like, okay, you're a university. Literally is every other team in college football except for Boston College. So like oh and the academies. So like there are a couple academies. There's a Boston College. Uh Gonzaga? Is is does Gonzaga not in their official title call themselves? Of course they don't play football though. Not No, no, Gonzaga's a university. Well, I know they is Boston College is also a university. Uh they just well, call no, themselves it's Boston Gonzaga College. Gonzaga University. It is Gonzaga University. Anyway. The <laughs> oh man should i not trusted him before he said that with confidence too kyle all right uh utah coming into this game 10 and 3 as as the pac-12 champions defeating oregon two times not just defeating oregon but just demolishing them both times Um, Uh, it's a a task ohio state failed at yeah a task we have a common opponent here and that's not good for ohio state no so you're looking at this, you're looking at this Utah team. It's a good team. It's a it's a pretty good team here. Um, they have a really good defense. I mean, they. I'm looking. I'm looking at the numbers here. They held Oregon to seven points, then ten points here, and the and their two matchups in November and first of December too. Uh, just really hunkering down Oregon here. So. You're without Olave. You're without Wilson. You're without one of your starting offensive linemen here. It's going to be a challenge for Ohio State to try to put up points against this um, Utah team who's been pretty good on defense as of late. Yeah, and like how much of that is sort of maybe Oregon losing steam, falling apart towards the end of the year? How much of that... um, was I mean just Ohio State's defense being a trash heap, uh, especially at the beginning of the year, right? So mm-hmm. that that just sort of is what it is uh, as far as Ohio State's defense. Um, I'm wondering, Kyle. I-, I can't help but wonder if we see more aggression from Ohio State's defense, um, especially in you know th- this game. You know, or again, if we're if we if we're putting an eye towards 2022. If if that's what we're doing, if we're putting an eye towards 2022, like officially Jim Knowles isn't a isn't isn't a part of the coaching staff yet. Officially, mm-hmm. he's being paid. Don't worry about that. But he's not one of he, he's not officially a coach yet. So he's not officially the defensive coordinator yet. Yet he's in the building. Um, I I can't help but wonder. I can't help but wonder, Kyle, uh, are, are, are we going to see a little bit more Jim Knowles-esque aggression from the Ohio State defense? Um, I, I sure would like to see that. <laughs> uh, you know, sort of sort of tired of this seven-man zone thing. I'd really like to see Ohio State get after some stuff and, you know, maybe, maybe allow someone like you know, whether it be Tyreek Smith or Zachary Harrison, like really get a chance to really go at it this game. Uh, you know, so, so the two guys, yeah. uh, uh, I don't think Harrison has made a public decision yet. Uh, Smith, I believe is in fact going to the NFL. So the, I just, I want to, I want to, I want to see something. I want to see something new from this defense is, I guess I'm trying, uh, I'm taking a really long time to say, I want to see something new from this defense. Yeah, so got to be careful with that about being aggressive with this uh, Utah team. They're they're putting up they're putting up about four hundred twenty eight yards per game, thirty five points per game. Uh, so they're they're putting up points, they're putting up yards. Very balanced team. It's almost fifty fifty passing to rushing per game here. But my worry, Jared, if Ohio State does 
be very aggressive. Two of their three main receivers are tight ends. They use their tight ends yeah. so much. Between their top two tight ends, their top two tight ends are combined at 77 receptions and have and have um 13 touchdowns from the team's 22 total for the year. 13 of the team's 22 passing touchdowns have been from the tight ends. Yeah, uh, which obviously um, is a thing that Ohio State was hurt by a lot in the past. Although I feel like they had a pretty good hold on the defense, or excuse me, on the tight ends this year. Yes, uh, they if, have. If we can get if we give Ohio State some credit on defense this year, I don't feel like they were getting bludgeoned by the tight end like we had seen Ohio State defenses be uh, bludgeoned in the past. So and, and my, give and them some worry, credit. It, yeah, and my worry is going to be the linebackers this year. They, they've shown some good games. Okay, like the Michigan State game played stellar in that yeah. game. But then we also saw the the previous game where they're just out of position, just not aggressive. Maybe they need to be aggressive here, but I, I worry about about how balanced Utah is, and they're just going to pick on the linebackers like we've seen many teams done in the past number of years too. Well, and so you have to look to see like who's Ohio State going to play at linebacker, right? Um, yeah, Steel and, Chambers and, has obviously been, especially from a coverage standpoint, from a pass coverage standpoint, Steel Chambers has been far and away the best linebacker on the team. So mm-hmm. expect this to be a, expect this to be a, a real Steel Chambers sort of game. I feel like he should be, I've, of course I've said since September that he should be, but regardless of who they're playing, but expect this to be a game in which you see, a, see Steel Chambers on the, on the field a lot. Um, yeah, especially especially with Cody Simon not not at practices either. So right, you're gonna ha- you're gonna you're gonna have to go into um, Mitchell. It's gonna have to um, is gonna have to play. Um, um, Pallier is gonna have to play as well. Neither of those guys uh, have been at all impressive in pass coverage this year. Mm-hmm. L- you know, and then, and, and then we all know that. Paid. And then we all know Eichenberg doesn't do well in coverage either. I think he's better than the other two. That's I... not... <laughs> <laughs> that, that, Fair enough, but my, big, my, big, my big concern is the linebackers here. It, it, it really is. It, it, may, it may be just because, like what you said at the beginning, this game really doesn't mean anything. Yeah, okay, having a nice having a trophy and another win column in a, in a bowl game. Yeah. It, it looks great on paper, but honestly, like what else does that do? What else does that do? Um, I, I think you, you get all the ball practices. You get the experience of going to Pasadena for a week. Um, the practices are what's really important. And um, you know, uh, it's it, the reports have been that the, Practices have been very aggressive, very, very aggressive. Um, the word soft has been used a lot in, in sort of in the wake of the Ohio state Michigan game. Um, the, the, tr- the guys in the trenches offensively and defensively are being challenged right now. Uh, so we'll, we'll see, uh, you know, to go back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the show, Haskell Garrett's gone. Um, Haskell Garrett's moving on. So, you know, you're already down a defensive tackle, Nicholas Petit Faree moving on. You're already down an offensive tackle. Uh, and this Utah team, since we're supposed to be talking about Utah right now, uh, this Utah team is, and and I'm not just saying this because of their alternative uniforms, which make them look very Wisconsin esque. They also are just very Wisconsin esque. Like if you're, if you're trying to, if you're, if you're looking for like a, a shorthand in your mind, if you're really trying to understand who is this Utah team offensively, defensively, if that's a thing you're trying to get your head around they're they're Wisconsin. I, I think that's a fair, I think that's pretty fair. Uh, they're a very, well, Utah is a very big 10 team. They are the, the, the one thing I would say that they're not very Wisconsin like Wisconsin likes, it seems like most of their starters are upperclassmen, juniors, seniors. 
you look at this Utah defense here. Yeah. Look, look at look at here, Jared. Look look at their uh their defensive line. Junior, freshman, true freshman actually. So junior, true freshman, true freshman, true freshman, all on the line. They they have uh, and their main starting cornerback, just like Ohio State, is a true freshman as well. Uh, th- so those they, of you so, who so, follow, so it's, it's not it's, so it's not like they have a lot of older, experienced players. It's fair. They got they got a lot of young players too. Uh, one of their best wide receivers is a redshirt freshman. Their one of their um, offensive guards is a redshirt. Fre- two of their gu- both guards are redshirt freshmen. Is a young Utah team, which is very scary. You can think of in the future in these next couple of years. Will Utah make a run for for the playoffs in the next year or two years for how young they are? We'll see. I- and I think that's a I think that's a great thing to keep an eye on. Uh, Kyle mentioned that one of the best players on the Utah defense is a freshman cornerback. Those of you who follow recruiting already know who we're talking about. Uh, Clark yep. Phillips the third, who was a guy that felt like an Ohio State get for a very very long time. Um, and he's making a big impact. He only has one interception, but you look at the you look inside the numbers: twelve pass breakups. Which is right. absurd. Which is absurd. Not just not just for a uh, a freshman uh, corner, but just in general. Twelve pass breakups for the year is is such a great number. And he and and he does have uh, the fifth most fifth most tackles on the team, which um, might be a good thing or a bad thing. Like, how, how do you get that many pass breakups? Well, maybe maybe they're thrown to you a lot, uh, but. You know, when it when it comes to Utah, they have very solid defensive players. Uh, Kyle already Kyle kind of poking a hole in my Wisconsin analogy, and ex- excellently so. I'll have to say this: I, I can't. He wasn't wrong about anything. I have to give him that. Uh, but linebacker play, huge thing for Utah, like we're used to seeing out of Wisconsin. Uh, keep an eye out, number zero. Uh, he. He's in the thumbnail. He's the guy in the thumbnail. Uh, last name Lloyd. Where's number zero? 107, Kyle. 107 tackles on the year, including eight sacks. And leads the team in interceptions with four. Uh, the guy does it all. <laughs> he does it all. So wherever number zero is, maybe go the other way. Yeah, De- Devin <laughs> Lloyd's a beast. Devin <laughs> Lloyd is an absolute beast. You will see him playing on Sundays. Uh, he's an absolute tremendous football player. He is a junior. Um, as far as I know, he's playing. <laughs> you never yeah, it's twenty twenty one. Who knows? Um, and, and and on the other side too, um, uh, Nuffy Stewell, Stewell, Stewell. I would say swell. I think uh, like swell. like the guy like like the guy in uh, it's spelled the same way. I believe is the guy from Oregon, the linebacker gotcha. from Oregon. Uh, and he's second on the team, 81 tackles. So both of these linebackers, yeah, a lot of the attention is Devin, and rightfully so, but number zero, number one on the linebackers. They, yeah. they, they got stellar linebackers this year, and both of them will get after players. As combined, they have nearly 30 tackle for loss between the two. Yeah, um, Swell also a junior for what it's worth. Um, and, and also I would say a guy I'm, I'm, I'm less certain, but also a guy who I absolutely believe is an NFL player. I, Swell will, will get his, his shot at the NFL, make, make, make yeah. you know, a mistake about that. Uh, Lloyd, I'm convinced will be a star in the NFL. Um, like when I say he's an NFL player, I mean, like he's a real NFL player Swell will also get his shot. Uh, they, I would say they're absolutely the two standouts on the defense. Uh, there, there's no. There, there's no hesitation in my mind. The the strength, I would say, maybe even Kyle. You want to challenge me on this? The strength of the entire Utah team is their linebackers. No, I won't challenge you because I think that's true. <laughs> I think that's true. But their defensive line, which I didn't even mention. <laughs> uh, no, I did. Yeah, their defensive line, uh, three of their four defensive linemen are true freshmen. And... Putting up numbers, <laughs> they're putting up numbers. Uh, uh, Tafuwa and Fillinger, both uh, 
true freshmen and combined have over 20 tackle for losses and 15 sacks for the year as true freshmen, putting up numbers. And a lot of that's probably with the two linebackers uh, making making plays and opening up the defensive ends to make plays. But but still, uh, it's, it's just such a great defense that Ohio State has to come up with. So I, I think Ohio State will be able to move the ball. I think Ohio State can move the ball if if the right calls are <laughs> if the right offensive play play calling is there. I, I really think this will be a high scoring game. I, I really do. Uh, with all things with all things said. It's just Ohio State needs to be able to get those younger players um, into rhythm. Because uh, they have to, the high state's going to have to score points to win this game. It's they can't they can't score twenty one points, and hopefully their defense can can hold down Oregon or Oregon who <laughs> hold down Utah. Uh yeah, uh, Tavon Thomas, uh, their premier runner on the team, uh, got the bulk of the carries, uh, nearly a hundred more carries than anyone else at running back on the team. Uh, went over a thousand yards for the year, uh, but don't let any of that, Kyle. Do not let any of that distract you from TJ Pledger, uh, who's also an excellent running back on the team. Um, again, for those of you who follow recruiting closely, uh, Tavon Thomas might be a name you know. Uh, Ohio State wasn't necessarily super involved there, but he is a, a kid from Dayton, so that might be a name you are familiar with. Um, both excellent running backs. Um, but like I said, uh, keep an eye on Pledger because even though he's not the feature back on the team, he's still very talented. There's not there's not a huge amount of drop off going uh, from running back one to running back two for Utah. Yeah, in the past uh, Kyle, we've five, made it this in the, far in. in. Sorry, in the past five games. In the past five games here, Tavion has again past five games. Tavion has had. 14 rushing touchdowns. Yeah. How many of those were against <laughs> against Oregon? Five of them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, it, this is a this is a good team. Like let's not let, let you know, let, let's not minimize Utah uh especially with Ohio State missing the players that they're missing. This is a game Ohio State can lose. Um you know, when it comes to the Rose Bowl, because um, I don't know if you, Kyle, n- not sure if you heard this. It's a consolation prize because it, it doesn't really matter. It is this year. It is this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, since the Rose Bowl doesn't really matter, um, sometimes motivation plays in. And I, I if reports are to be believed, Ohio State might have a fair amount of motivation coming in. They've been challenged. They've been called soft by their coaching staff. Um there's a potentially, you know, and who knows, you know, we're, we're in the midst of silly season here. Who knows? We might see a complete revamping of the Ohio State defensive coaching staff soon. So, you know, when you're a player, does does your it, maybe your current coach has your back, but maybe the next guy doesn't. Maybe you better put some stuff on tape. And, you know, there's some guys on the field who might be playing their last Ohio state game and they're going to need to put some more. If their last game on film was the Michigan game, uh, there's no one on that defense who came out of that Michigan game looking good. You probably don't want that to be your last game on film. And maybe again, to just set the tone for 2022. And you know, if, if that's what this game is, then let that be what this game is and set the tone for 2022, because we all have a bad taste in our mouth right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. Seen way too many, Jared. Since, since that loss, I've seen way too many uh, blue and yellow uh, attire all of a sudden come out of hibernation. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out not just the uh, animal wolverine goes into hibernation. Do, do wolverines go into hibernation? I don't know. They're a weasel. I don't know. Do, 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 rodents, do rodents ever hibernate, or is that strictly a... A mammal thing. Welcome to my TED talk. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, Jared. All right, let, let's let's get into our questions real quick here, Jared. Uh, Ohio State player to watch for this for this game here. What's the one player to watch out for this Ohio State team? JSN. Um, you know, he he one of the three wide receivers. Uh, the triple threat wide receivers that Ohio State has, and that triple threat became a single threat, and that single guy is uh, Jackson Smith and Jimba. Uh, it's, Mm -hmm. he's the guy now, what, what can he do if he doesn't have a lave and Wilson drawing coverage off of him? Yeah. My, my player to watch for Ohio state is steel chambers. He, he, he's gotta be the, he's gotta, he's gotta be that, that voice. He's gotta be that leader on that defense to stop those tight ends. Like that, that's my big worry for this game. I, I think Ohio State should be able to stop uh, Trevion Thomas, but but man, those two tight ends they they can really they can really set the tone on how aggressive Ohio State can be on defense. And if Chambers can step up big, that's that's going to be a big big win for this defense here. So I got I got Chambers. That's a good one. Who do you have as the enemy player to watch? And don't steal my answer. <laughs> uh i'm i'm actually going to go with uh their main their main tight end uh brant kuwith okay uh i'm going devin lloyd thank you for not stealing my answer uh i, <laughs> I think he's i think he's the best player on this team yep yep all right and key matchup jared i i already said mine it's the tight end versus the running backs. It's 13 of the linebackers. 22 touchdowns. 13 of Kyle. the 22 touchdowns Kyle. have been to the Kyle. Yep. linebackers. Yep. What did you I said say? tight ends versus running backs. Okay. Tight ends versus but you, linebackers. You, well, I, but you know, still chambers. Like I get, I get where you were coming <laughs> from there. Um, tight end and, and, and linebackers, 13 of the 22 touchdowns going to the tight ends. Uh, they they combined here, Jared, for nine hundred and ninety nine, yeah nine nine hundred and ninety nine yards for the season between the two tight ends. Got to stop them. Got to stop them. Uh, am I still doing the key matchup? You are. All right. Uh, Ohio State's offensive line versus the Utah front seven. Kyle mentioned all those great defensive line back or defensive line men. I mentioned those great uh, linebackers. Ohio state got pushed around against Michigan. Ohio state got pushed around against Michigan. They, they had, they need to, they need to strongly redeem themselves. Th- this, if this game has any meaning, it is that it is a redemption arc for Ohio state. The, the road back to domination over Michigan starts January 1st in the Rose Bowl. It is 2022, or at least it will be when the game is kicked off. It is 2022. The road back to the Big Ten Championship starts with the tone you set going into the offseason. And Utah just happens to be the team on the other side of the field who uh, is in your way. The redemption arc starts now. And yep. you, you do that first and foremost by winning the trenches and these Utah front seven, not pushovers. If Ohio state goes into this game and they push over, they make an impact. They don't, don't be like, ah, well, it was just Utah. No, nah, this is a good, this is a good front seven from Utah. If Ohio State can go into this game and dominate, if the offensive line can dominate and they can be aggressive and they can find that fire. Don't say it was just Utah. Absolutely. All right, Jared. Um, I had to re-look here because I... The, the, the spread, the, the number keeps moving. Well, The number keeps so. bouncing <laughs> and moving and around. Rightfully, rightfully I believe so. it started with Ohio State minus seven and a half. What yep. is it uh, at the moment of this recording, Kyle? Four and a half. So Ohio State still favored. You lose all those guys, and it goes down to about four and a half. Honestly, Jared, 
I'm probably going to get a lot of people hating me here. I'm probably going to take Utah to, to cover here. I still, I still think Ohio State has the better players, even with their losses, or not players um, opting out here. Ohio State still has the better team here. I, in, in doubt, pick the quarterback. Ohio State's quarterback is better. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll pick Ohio State to win, but not cover. Okay. Um, that's probably smart. Uh, you know, sort of the, hey, when in doubt, and there's a huge amount of doubt here, right? When in doubt, pick the underdog. Um, I, I got a lot of good traction off of that theme this year, but uh, we're not in the sloop picks anymore. And screw it. Give me those scarlet and gray. Give me Ohio State to win, to cover, to restart the redemption arc. That's what this is. This is the redemption arc. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for that too. I just... Kyle, Kyle, the sloop picks are over. This doesn't count. I'm inviting you. I'm, I am handing you an opportunity to change your mind and do the right thing here. I'm and fine. Cast your vote for the Ohio state redemption arc. I'm good. I'm good, Jared. All right. All right. But... How's just in one word, Kyle, and in, in, in one word, because we're running long. How's your bowl confidence picks going? Uh, average. That was your one word. Sorry, you're done. You went with uh. You? Uh. <laughs> oh, that was yours. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Um, uh, let's screw the final score. Uh, do you have one already? I forgot to write one down. Do you have I a didn't. final score? So let, let's let's do let's do thirty five thirty two Ohio State wins. All right, all right, all right. Uh, hold on, let me let me let me do some quick calculations here. I have a tradition to uphold. Yep, I know. <laughs> uh, while Jared while Jared's looking that up, uh, just a few last tidbits. No, no, non football related though. But just kind of get this Kyle's corner. Yeah. Okay. Well, just real quick. Thirty eight, thirty one. All right. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Ohio, Ohio State's basketball team, since last we talked, missed the past three games here. Uh, still, their next game here, Jared, as I am looking, is going to be hopefully Sunday uh, at Nebraska, 8 p.m. So that is a Sunday, January 2nd. Hopefully Ohio State can uh, get back onto the court because we haven't seen them since that Wisconsin win. And despite them playing, Jared, they keep moving up in the polls. <laughs> There's something to be said about not losing. Um, yeah. <laughs> they kind of, Kyle, this is, I, we're all Big Ten guys here. Um, this, this is, I'm sure, how it feels to be an SEC team the week before rivalry week, where you mm -hmm. basically just not play and move up in the polls. I mean, yeah, like they're playing, but they're playing, you know, FCS schools and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Kyle, that's anything else in Kyle's corner? No, that's that's it for me. Uh, I, well, I don't think we mentioned it, but uh, legend John Madden yes. passed away um, right before we hit that record button here. Uh, that's... Mm. Uh, I'll just I'll just sum it up that 2020 uh, sucked sucks real bad <laughs> and, for, and, and for, for for a lot of for a lot of personal reasons. So uh, and, and just so we're on the record, 2021 is just 2022 part two. Is 2020 part two? Because you sure. said 20 you said 2020 sucks, and yeah, I was just trying to bail yeah, you 2021 out. just yeah it can it can be a year that. To forget, so <laughs> you're 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 late, Austin. We're we're done here. <laughs> um, well, well it's, it's okay. We record these. Not sure if you know that, but we record these. Oh, ho oh! That went well. I hope that went well, Austin. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, no, well, no, that's we'll talk about that after we're done recording. Uh oh oh we need all the juicy details. Oh, then. all of it now. <laughs> all right, Jared. That, that's it. That's all I got for for today. We'll catch you on the um on the uh, Scarlet and Grade episode as we record on Sunday. So if you want to participate in our live chat, 
be sure to be sure to join us on the Discord and become a Patreon, and you get to join our uh, shenanigans in the chat in future episodes. Oh, you're good, Austin. No one cares. Uh, <laughs> if I can, I can care. offer you uh, a thing that might make you feel better it's that actually no one cares about you <laughs> that's not true austin <laughs> that's not true don't listen to jared don't listen to jared you know they no no one has any idea who austin is just with a just with a first name come on you're fine um All right, you... yeah so yeah that's it that's the end of the, today's episode um once again, if you are, if you're listening to the audio version of this, just, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't worry about anything. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, this is our last Buckeye Scoop uh, episode. This is our last episode on the Buckeye Scoop podcast slash uh, YouTube network. So uh, make sure to find our YouTube channel. That is just our YouTube channel. Uh, just Sloopcast on YouTube. Be sure to find that. Um, we're... There, there's a new Sloopcast coming. And I, don't, and I don't mean like, just like, oh, there's new episodes coming. Like, we're, we're going to change some stuff up. Uh, this will be, um, in some ways, a significant change. Uh, in some ways, we'll still just be Kyle and I talking about sports. So don't don't get too too worried about it. Uh, and by sports, I mean Ohio State sports. Like, we're not, we're not, <laughs> we're not widening the scope. Uh, we're sticking to Ohio State. Um, but yeah, uh, we, uh, for, for our own entertainment and maybe for the sake of just doing something a little bit different and trying something a little bit new, um, 2022, we'll have a brand new style sloopcast. So, uh, if you want to come join us, uh, in that adventure, come join us in that adventure. Uh, so if you, uh, if you want to, if you want to, you want to come find us, come find us. I guess is all I'm going to say. So uh, tonight's ending music, Kyle, will be brought to us by Clifton and Other Such Rebels. Uh, that is the name of the group, Clifton and Other Such Rebels. Uh, the name of the song is The Untimely Eleanor Jean. That's the name of this song, The Untimely Eleanor Jean. Uh, you can, uh, if you're, again, if you're listening to this on the podcast version, once again, you, you guys got it easy. You can just do nothing. Just, just, just stay, just stay right where you're at. Uh, YouTube folks, there are some links down in the, in the, in the uh, show notes where you can go listen to the song on your own if you so choose. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Clifton and other such rebels. Mm -hmm.